Once again, welcome everybody. We appreciate you joining us this morning for this uh, webinar on the uh, reflow product line. Uh, Niagara Mods is with us today to uh, uh, give us a, a, a good uh, look at the product and uh, what it'll what it'll do for uh, uh, for you and for your customers. So with that, uh, John, you want to uh, take it away? We sure appreciate it. Yeah, awesome. Thanks so much, Randy. Uh, welcome, everyone. This is going to be the Reflow webinar. I want to thank everyone for joining here today. Um, just as a little introduction, my name is John Bray. I'm with Niagara Mods. I am the client experience manager here. So I deal with a lot of onboarding and um, training and just a lot of demo sessions and, and walkthroughs. So happy to be here and special thanks to TCS and all the Kelly companies for having me today. So um, as Randy mentioned, we're going to drop through Reflow today. So if you are unfamiliar with it, this will be a great opportunity to kind of learn a little about what it is, how it works, and how you can use it to improve your integrations. Um, so here I am. Hopefully everyone can see my screen at this point. I am at NiagaraModules.com. This is our website. This is where ultimately you can uh, get Reflow and take a look at what it has to offer as well, some other things as well, but not gonna get too much into uh, the other items today. So once you're here, um, ultimately we invite everyone to create a free account with us. This allows you to not only download and experience Reflow, but also um, get in tune with all of the other elements that we offer as well. So the first thing that I wanna do is talk about sort of what Reflow is and where it came from. So. Our team of developers here sort of were sitting around during COVID just like everyone else and decided, you know, we need a, we have a problem here um, that we're seeing throughout the industry and we think we have a way to solve it. And that problem is graphics. So it's a spot where most system integrators are not super comfortable with making a presentation or a graphical representation of a graphic that is modern and feels healthy, um, sort of like the modern web is is today with websites like Airbnb and, um, you know, Facebook, Apple, and, you know, everyone's giving these really nice graphics and the BAS industry is a little behind when it comes to that. So that's sort of where Reflow came from. Ultimately, what it is, is just two uh, modules that get installed on your station, and then it gets dropped in as a service on top of your station. So it doesn't override anything that you already have existing. Think of it as complementary to what you already have inside of Niagara. So let's take a look at what that looks like right now. I'll dive right in here to our Reflow product page. And here, right up at the top, you can see we can experience the Reflow in action. I can dive into our live demos here. It takes us to an external website, demo.n4.niagramods.io. Um, this is a website free for anyone to use and view. Ultimately, you're logging into a station that we've got set up in the server. Um, it automatically generates our username and password here. That way, all you have to do is click login and browse demos. Once I'm here, we've got a myriad of different um, examples here for you guys to take a look at. The first one that I'm gonna dive right into is called Reflow University. And this is just a look at a higher education multi-building campus setup. So I'll click the blue launch demo button. And right away, it takes us into this graphical package. Now, if I take a first look at this, this does not feel like a building automation system. This feels like something new, something fresh. Um, something that's going to give me a lot of variability in building my site out, and it can look different depending on how I want it to look. And I'll show you that in some of the other demos as well. But things that I notice that really make Reflow pop out are the crispness of the images, um, the icons, the colors, the way we're able to integrate everything to make it feel modern and useful. Um, it, again, it doesn't feel like a building automation system. And we're able to do that using a couple of different key concepts here. So I'll start up at the top. At the top, we've got our logo brought in, um, and then we've got a navigation bar built in already at the top for you. So not a whole lot of customization here that you have to do. Of course you can, but out of the box, Reflow is going to give you a lot of these things. So I've got a building dropdown list. I've got my global alarms, histories, and I've got some custom KPI pages that I'll get into here in a minute. We've got a nice title, a subtitle, and then we've got a nice image of our actual campus here. So this is called the hero background image. It really helps to brand the site and bring everything together. Below that, we've got a nice looking dashboard and all of these are called dashboard cards. So all of these straight out of the box with Reflow, no extra add on, and you're able to use them and customize them as you like. So the first one that I'll sort of talk about here is gonna be our building map. With this building map, these are just buildings plotted on here. I can zoom all over the place. I can plot these on. You'll see these are gonna change colors based on the actual building status. 
Clicking on one of these is going to give me a little bit more information. So I can see it's got a nice little ring around it, letting me know that that building is online right now. A little bit of context that the building image got the name, the floor count, and the device count as well. Got the other three listed here as well. Below that, I've got some um, dashboard cards showing off the gauges. So I've got some um, electricity usage here with some icons. All of these icons that you'll see throughout Reflow are coming straight out of the box. Again, we've got over 1,800 of them. You can customize them, change the color, and we've got those at three different weights. A little bit below that, we've got a history chart. Uh, this is showing off some IAQ points for this VAV1, space temp, CO2, and zone humidity. One special thing I want to point out here is that we're able to plot different points with different facets all on the same chart without making it look too cluttered or too confusing, right? So you see I've got two different y-axes here, and I can sort of hover over them to kind of fade out the other two. I can do the same thing in our space temperature point. So again, a lot of functionality in just this little box, and I'll expand on histories a little bit more later. We got our active alarm count, and then we've got a, a point card showing off the space temperature with a little bit of background about where that space temperature actually is. So I could tell you that this is in the lobby, or I can show you bringing that image to life and being able to display that in a really cool way that also adds a pop of color to uh, our whole dashboard here. Below that, I've got some uh, custom tables showing off some more electricity usage for each building and again using custom icons that I can build out and use all over the place and then pulling the Niagara data over on the right side of that table. A little bit below that we've got some feature equipment here so just pulling through some of the equipment that we deemed um, specifically necessary to this site maybe that a sea level suite guy might want to look at um, just being able to pull that to the forefront. So I'll dive right in here. I'm going to go up to buildings and I'll go to all buildings. So this is going to give me a bigger map view uh, of look and see of, um, you know, my building counts. I can also see alarm counts here per building. So it looks like our admin building has three. I'm going to dive right into that admin building. Now notice a couple things changed. Um, my hero background image changed. So now I've got an image of my actual admin building, adding a little bit more context to sort of what's going on on this page. And then I've got another dashboard um, showing off some information that is specific to my admin building. Here I've got another bar, calling this the sub navigation, where I've got alarms, schedules, floors, equipment, histories, and air quality pages, all specific to the admin building. So think of this as like a local level navigation, as opposed to up here in the top right, where we've got our global navigation. Okay, so again, scrolling down, I can build these dashboards. It's another place where I can add some of the same information, or I can make it different. Scrolling down a little bit further, we've got some floor plans here showing off the first and second floor with some nice cards showing off the actual spaces. And then we've got some equipment lists here below that. Diving right into the equipment, I can click view all here on the equipment type. And the first view that's going to pop up is going to be this grid view. Now with this grid view, I can see a little snapshot of the AHU. I can see the floor and the building it's associated with, and I can see what we're calling the feature point here. Now I can set this up as a system integrator to show any point that I want here, but also as the end user, if I want to see something in a quick snapshot, I can jump up here to the top right and change what I'm looking at here. So maybe I want to check on the cooling valve position for all of these different AHUs, or maybe the discharge static pressure. And I could take a look at that really quickly. I can always jump back to my feature point here. And again, this is just as the end user right now. Maybe I want to look at a little bit more data. So maybe I sort of want a table view. I can also do that here, switching over to table view, and I can see some points that I've assigned here to our table. Again, built out as a system integrator, but I can also customize this as the end user. It's also going to give me some key context clues, like uh, showing up in red for this discharge temp, letting me know, hey, these are an alarm right now. You might want to go check that out. So I'm going to click table options here, and I'm just going to go to edit columns. Again, all of this as the end user. Maybe I don't necessarily need to see my discharge pressure or my cooling valve commands, and I want to drop in my airflow, my humidity, uh, maybe my free stat, and my mode. And I can hit done there. Quickly, I built out sort of a custom table as the new end user, and then I can hit export CSV to go ahead and save this table right to my machine. Uh, that means no report service, no export service, no email service associated. Really quick and easy, all from my web browser, I'm able to build that table and drop it right into my file system to be able to use elsewhere. 
So as you can see, a lot of this is, is really enhancing some of the labor intensive things that you'd experience as a system integrator and, and helping you get that done uh, without actually having to configure anything. And then the end user has a little bit more power to kind of configure and customize exactly what they want to see. So I'll jump right into an HU here. This is the first look at what an AHU graphic can look like. In this instance, we're actually using a PX here and pulling that through using the um, standard N4 graphics that we've got. And then below that, we've got some points. So in this instance, we're using smaller point cards with a really large graphic that spans across the whole screen here over on the top. And then down here, we've got our points split into groups. So you can see I've got zone, discharge, heat, cool, and then some groups that are automatically um, minified here. And I can open those up if I need. A lot of customization comes with this page. So right off the bat, you can see that my discharge temp is highlighted in red here, just showing alarm. I can hit the drop down here and take a look at that. It's got that alarm badge there showing off. And then I've got a history uh, hyperlink already built in. So this is called a smart history. I can dive right in there and sort of see what's going on and it's gonna automatically hyperlink me to that history. Now quickly, what you'll notice is over on the top left, I've got breadcrumbs that automatically get me right back to where I was at. So again, all the navigation here built out automatically without me having to do any extra setup. So this is using what's called in colon history tag. Um, anytime that you have a Niagara history associated with a Niagara point, it's automatically going to pull this through for you, which is really awesome because I don't have to set up any hyperlinks. I don't have to do any extra configuration. It's already there for me. So quickly, when I'm at the history, I can look at the last hour or I can switch to the last eight, last 12, everything's straight out of the box. Again, I can look at the last seven days and get a peek at you know, what this discharge rate temp has been doing. Now with this functionality, there's really a lot we can do here um, that really enhances this product. Again, I'm just pulling the standard Niagara histories out, but I have a lot more customization that I can do here inside of Reflow. So let's take a look at maybe the last 12 hours. And then let's take a look at some of the different options we have on the top right here. So similar uh, to my table options, I've got some options here in the top right that I can customize what this chart looks like. So by default, I've got area turned on, which gives me the line and a little bit of shading underneath to give me a pop of color. I can turn that off and just go to line, switch over to bar, heat map, and scatter. I can also just give myself a table and then I can export this as a CSV. All of the other charts are exportable as well, just as SVGs, PNGs, or CSVs. The first two are images. The last one is just a table. Other functionality that I've got here is I can use these plus minus buttons to zoom in, hit the home button, which is going to relativize back to whatever time period I have selected over on the left. And I can also click drag to zoom in and hover, and I can see what's going on, say, at 5.30 a.m. right here. So discharge tempo is a little high. I'll go back to home here. Let's say I want to compare this to my set point. So I want to sort of add some chart data here. So I've got my discharge temp already. Reflow is automatically going to parse my whole station for all of my different histories and bring those to the forefront. From there, I can sort of assign which buildings I want them to go to. Maybe I want to just see them all all the time. Maybe I want to hide some of them that I have in there just for extra data points. Looks like I've got 100 histories here. I want to go ahead and search. So I can just start typing here. And maybe I want to find my discharge temp set point. Looks like it's right there. I can add that sort of like as a shopping cart. You can see them start totaling up at the top. And then I can hit view chart. Now you can kind of see that automatically my secondary point, which would be my discharge temp set point in this case, has gotten a secondary color that I've set for this site specifically. And those colors are going to carry through all throughout Reflow. Now a really cool function of this chart is that I can switch this to a delta. What that means, it's going to show me the change of value for each of these. So notice that my discharge temp set point stays at zero because it doesn't ever change. However, my AHU uh, discharge temp has gone, you know, swung maybe 13 degrees down here and then another seven degrees up. And we got some larger swings here later on. Maybe that leads me to look at a discharge temp head loop, letting me know that, hey, that's, you know, it's kind of modulating quite a bit. I might want to take a look at that. Okay, so that's sort of histories. I want to jump into the alarms here. So I'm going to go up to global alarms. And we've got sort of this console look and feel. I can change some of these defaults here depending on what I want to see. But notice that we've got everything set to high, medium, and low priority, which again, I can customize, change the color of, rename, things like that. 
uh, this really breaks it out into a really nice space for us. So I've got all the same functionality that a Niagara Alarm Console would have, but it looks a lot more clean, a lot more crisp here inside of Reflow. So let's say I want to take a look at uh, this first alarm here. I can take a look at all the different records, all the times that it went off. Maybe I even want to look at the summary view or the table view. I can even add notes maybe for my other uh, coworkers to kind of see or maybe for the technicians to come out and take a look at. And then I can close that up. I can select one at a time coming through here, or I can unselect at all times and then select at all times and then acknowledge selected or even add notes here as well. We'll jump back to the alarm console. I can switch from all records to only the ones that are active right now, to only the ones that are active right now and unacknowledged at the same time. I can look at different priority cases. And then of course I can export any of these tables um, as I please. So I'll switch those back on. Okay, so gone through histories, gone through alarms. Another thing that is pretty standard coming with, out of Reflow is going to be schedules. So again, Reflow is looking at all of the different schedule components that I have inside my station, automatically pulling those through for me with names formatted, telling me what the current um, current status of that schedule is, showing me when it's going to change, and then I can click in here and get that Niagara view and sort of set it up just like I would inside of Niagara. So I'll jump back to the building here. I'll jump right back into equipment and look at our AHU one more time. So another thing outside of smart histories that I've got is the ability to override and change set points here. So any, any point that's got an arrow here is gonna allow me to auto override or set here. Pretty straightforward if I wanna jump this up maybe to 47, I can hit okay there. It's gonna let me know that that set action ran successfully. The same thing is gonna happen when I choose to override. So let's say I'll write this down to 66. It's going to let me know that that ran. It's at overridden at priority eight, and it's even highlighted in that Niagara purple to let me know that that's overridden right now. A cool thing about our equipment here is that I can also associate our floor plan and our devices. So I can say this serves five devices. These five VAVs have been associated with this AHU. I can jump right in to go take a look at one of those, and I can quickly jump back to that AHU. Now, I talked a little bit about it being responsive. Well, what does that mean? It means that no matter my browser size, Reflow is always going to switch the format to be able to complement that, um, whether I be in tablet mode or even on a mobile phone. So I'll show that off a little bit by sort of shrinking these down. And you'll see that everything sort of resizes. My image still stays crisp in, in the middle. And then sort of my cards fall into this single column. That way I'm not scrolling left or right. Now, this is something that's not so easy to do in Niagara, but very easy to do right out of the box with Reflow. Again, no extra configuration necessary. And I'll go even smaller here to, if I were in a mobile format, I've still got my nice looking graphic here. I've still got my, my points falling into this single column here. All the same functionality, again, straight out of the box. Notice one thing that happens when I do that is that my navigation shrinks into this, what we call hamburger menu. So it's not crowding up the top of the space here. I can still get to all of my menu items here for my global and then my sub navigations. Okay, so really awesome there. And that happens across the board, whether that be with our dashboard cards and I'll even show off the alarms here because something cool happens with the alarms. So instead of having a really big table where I'd have to scroll left and right across a CSV sheet, all of my alarms get shifted into these little dashboard cards. So I have each card I can still go through and select a couple of them and acknowledge all of those alarms. So awesome functionality there. So make this a little bigger so you guys can see again. And I'll go back home. So again, this is Reflow University, just one instance of what a Reflow site can look like. I'm going to exit this demo and switch over to the next one just to show you some of the differences. So the next one is looking more like a single building retail. This one's called Healthy Food. It's going to be about a grocery store. So pulling through some different cards here. Cool thing that we've done with this one is actually use some custom PX views to pull through as dashboard cards. So you'll see that in some of our dairy, produce, and frozen coolers or freezers here. We've got nice looking graphics showing off some alarm data. And then we've got some cards here showing off the temperatures. And in this case, these are quarter size cards. So we're able to make those cards a little bit smaller in this instance to show off a little more data below that. And what I really wanna focus on here is gonna be the actual floor plan. So I'll jump right into the dairy section. 
Now, when I jump into the dairy section, we've got a nice looking 3D floor plan here. We've got some labels, some zones, and then some temperature values of our milk, yogurt, and cheese sections. A really cool thing that we can do with our floor plans is show off states. In our states, that means that we can hide or show different things depending on what I want to look at. So this is our dairy state right now. I can switch over to our produce, which is going to show us RTU2. And then I can switch over to our frozen, which is RTU3, showing off that section. I can switch to HVAC only, which is going to give us only our RTUs. And then I can switch to overview, which is going to show us everything on the page. Again, right out of the box, all of these labels are able to hyperlink to my equipment, so I can jump right over to RTU1. This is a different look and feel of what I can do with the equipment graphics here. So in this case, our graphic is sliding over to the left, and then our cards are over on the right side. A good use case for this would be if I have a lot of points here and I want to continuously scroll down on the right, and notice my graphic sticks with me on the left. So I don't have to pan over back and forth if I'm trying to look at exhaust fan status to make sure it matches the graphic here. So really cool functionality there. Another thing that we've added on this site specifically is that I've got my schedule actually associated with my piece of equipment. So I can pop in very quick because I've associated the schedule. I'll make a couple of changes, save it and X right out. And I never lost my place in my navigation. I'll jump over to histories here and look at some of the featured histories. So let's say that I've got some really important histories that I want to make active all the time. I can add those right up at the top here. My meat temp, dairy temp, pizza temp, and juice temp it allows me to dive right in without really having to look for it. Okay, so I'll jump back here and I'll exit this demo. We'll take a look at the third one. So this one is called Phone Boost. This is more of a national multi-building retail site. Uh, this one looks really cool. Again, giving us a different look and feel to what the possibilities are with Reflow. So again, of course, we've got a nice looking logo. We've got a nice looking hero background image. In this case, we've actually manually shrunk down everything into the hamburger menu. So to navigate, you'll pop that open. And then we've got some new dashboard cards. So again, custom table here showing off some savings that we've integrated with each building automation system. We've got a most efficient brands being in Chicago, and we've got a nice map feature. In this case, these are not changing colors. These are just matching the primary color of the, uh, of the site that we've got here. Again, featured equipment across the middle. And then we've actually pulled through our featured histories down here at the bottom to give us that little preview of those uh, utility and meter usages. So one thing that I can do with this one is I can jump into branches here and I can go to all branches. Notice everything's broken out into east, south, and west. It's going to show me the same thing when I look at all of my branches here. East, south, west, I can set up different images here or icons if I want to break those out. And it's going to be broken out here down below as well. So let's just dive right into the Chicago branch. So this is a different look at what a dashboard can look like. In this instance, we've sort of brought a lot of images here to the forefront, giving off some pops of color, but we've sort of darkened everything to give it a more moody feel. And again, very easy to do inside of Reflow. So showing off some cool things here, jumping right into the floor plan. We've got indoor air quality here. And then we've got some um, sort of outside of the box thinking here. So active staff counts, average wait times, customer satisfaction, being able to pull all of that into Niagara and display it in a really cool way that, that really accentuates the site here. We've got some lobby lighting, stock room lighting, and then outdoor lighting controls here. I can click on any of these and turn those right off those lobby lightings and you'll see that offering successfully and you'll see that update here in just a little bit. So I'll jump right into the floor plan. Another look at what a floor plan can look like. So again, this is a 3D version where we've got some zones. We're not using traditional labels here. These are actually um, zone identifiers letting me know that, hey, this is VAV 105. I can jump right in there and see that graphic. Jumping back to this, one thing that I can do is switch from HVAC to lighting, again, using those states. So I can sort of click through, jumping on these light bulbs, turning those on. And as I begin to click through, you'll see these start to kind of follow suit, letting me know that the action is ran in the top right corner. It's going down to Niagara, turning that on, and then receiving that input back inside of Reflow. So again, really optimizing the, the use case here for the floor plans and the way that you can actually run through the, the equipment here. And again, because of the responsive design, I'm able to sort of shrink this down and it's going to modify. And it all looks really good.
Okay, so jumping back out to the exit demo here, I'll show you guys the last one that we have here on our site. It's called Big Data, where I can launch this demo. And this one is more sort of looking at a server room where it's just one dashboard. I want to get straight to the point. I don't want to have to go navigate anywhere else. I can see my alarms and histories if I need to, but everything's sort of right here on the page for me. So this is a really awesome dashboard that's easy to build out. Again, all custom, all tables, all icons pulled through, history cards, um, gauge cards, everything here looks really good. And it's really easy to build this out and provide a lot of data in just one page. So don't have to do a whole lot of scrolling. I can quickly grab a screenshot of this page and pull that out as my weekly report, email that out to anybody that needs it. Whatever I need to do, it's all right here. It's a really awesome look there. So I'll exit this demo here. And I'm going to jump back out and, and sort of switch gears a little bit. So I've showed you guys sort of what's possible with Reflow. Now I want to show you guys how to actually implement it into your systems and how easy it can be. So I'm going to switch over here to Niagara. So again, Reflow is just a set of modules, two modules that you have to install. Uh, very low maintenance. You just grab them and then you can see them in here in the palette. I'll just open that open. In Mods Reflow Palette, there's my Reflow service. All you have to do to get started is drag and drop that into your services bucket right here. There's my Reflow service. I've got it running there, and I can jump right in. Now, of course, you can access this through the Workbench side. It's going to load over here in the preview pane, but this is not what we suggest. The reason for that is because Niagara is automatically going to uh, use a version of Chromium or Chrome or that web browser that's a little bit older. And some of the key differences are going to be like image resolution, font choices, font size, font clarity. Um, you can kind of see here, this is a little bit thick compared to my other sites and the font's a little bit different. So I want to show you guys what that looks like over on this side. So again, I'll log in just like I normally would here into my station. And you can see, again, already a lot clearer. Um, everything looks a lot more crisp, and now I'm ready to work. So three different views right out of the box that we've got. This is the regular reflow view. With this view, you notice that I still have some Niagara UI here in the background. So I still have uh, sort of my navigation inside of my station. I could still access my palettes here. I could still change my view and maybe get to property sheet or slot sheet. Well, a real easy way to sort of take that away for the end user is going to be going to Reflow Redirect. So I want you to take a look at my URL bar here up at the top. You can see exactly where I'm at. I'm in services and then the Reflow service. When I switch to Reflow Redirect, it's going to sort of take me out of that and take away all of that Niagara UI, again, without the system integrator having to set that up. So no longer can the end user change their view. I can't really see any of the Niagara HX stuff. And I, my URL bar is sort of hidden from me. So I'm in sort of what we call a servlet view here. Now, because I haven't set anything up yet, I'm going to have to uh, manually get out of this and go back to the ORD here and get back to our regular reflow view. Now, where the system integrator will actually be configuring things is going to be inside the reflow config view. Now, when I open reflow for the first time, this is what's going to pop up. So we call this the getting started wizard. It's really to help you guys. You don't have to use it if you don't want. You can hit no thanks, but we definitely suggest it because it really helps optimize things and really get you flowing. So let's go ahead and do it real quick. I'll go ahead and click get started. It's going to give me a checklist. So it's going to say, hey, we suggest you have a logo, a hero photo, and a building photo to go ahead and get started. Of course, if you don't have one or more of the files on the checklist ready to go, don't worry. You can always add them in later. So all of this stuff is just going to be accessing things that I already have in my stations file system. So I'll go ahead and hit next here. I can give my site a title. Let's say this is going to be John's reflow site. I'll hit next here. It's going to allow me to brand my experience. So obviously customer branding is highly important, right? We want to make sure that we have a good logo. We may want to make sure that we're carrying over um, the expressions of the brand itself. And we're able to do that using the logo, the hero, and the color choices that we have. So I'm going to go ahead and browse a logo here. And again, browsing my station's file system, I think I have a generic folder in here where I just have our Reflow logo as an SVG. Um, SVG, if you're not familiar, is a vector image. It really just helps you um, to size the image how you need without really uh, stretching it or making it a bad resolution size. I'm going to go to that same folder and choose a hero background image from our generic there. And we're just going to grab that guy right here. Okay, so I've got those two. I'm ready to go. I can hit next. 
The next thing I'm gonna do is set my colors. So I can select the primary and secondary. I can do that using a hex code. I can do it just scrolling all around here and just picking something that looks cool. And then we've got a color picker here down at the bottom that's gonna sort of help us out. So just as a quick little explanation, the bottom left is always gonna be my primary color. The color to the right of that is my secondary. The rest of this bottom row is gonna be complementary to my primary, primary and secondary. So it's using an algorithm to kind of choose colors that complement it. Um, without overstepping there. The top row is going to be a little bit different. So this is a gray that we use all over the place. You'll see that in some of our text, a darker black, a lighter white, and then our alarm priority colors in the green, yellowish orange there, and then the red. These six white boxes are recent colors. So if you have a color that you want to use a lot, but it's not your primary and secondary, you can add it there and sort of save it and use it all the time. So I'm going to leave my primary there as that lighter blue and maybe I choose start here and choose a darker blue here for my secondary. So it looks pretty good. I can hit next. This is where I'm going to configure the weather service by default. The weather location is set to Delaware, Ohio. This is the birthplace of Reflow. I want to go ahead and add a navigation widget there and I'll leave it set to Imperial and hit next. I'm going to call this John's building. So we're asking you to set up a building first because uh, this is the optimal workflow for Reflow. So you don't necessarily have to build the dashboard out or build the floor plans out just yet. But when you add equipment, you want to be able to assign it to a building and a floor. So you want to sort of already have that set up. So I'm going to say this building has two floors. I'm going to browse for a photo here. I'm going to go higher ed and say this is just going to be my library. Perfect. So I'll hit next here. It's going to say, hey, you're all set. Congratulations. That was pretty easy. I can hit finish and save. And Reflow is going to start rebranding for me already. So really cool there. Pretty easy to set up. Um, not super hard to configure, right? I've got my logo pulled through. My hero background image is looking good. A couple things that I notice is I'm running out of out of uh, space here up in my top right corner. So my equipment is sort of blinded out because of the background. And again, I can adjust that. But notice our primary and secondary colors are following through here. So there's that dark blue accent that I kind of chose that matches our background a little bit better. And then the light Niagara blue here. So to begin changing the, some of those things, I can jump right into theme and I can go right into colors. So these are our automatic colors here. I'm gonna set my navigation item colors to uh, sort of this lighter blue here that we chose, there's our primary. When I hover over, I wanna to go to the secondary and maybe when it's active, we're gonna choose like a lighter gray here. Really quick and easy to set that up. I can change my title color here as well. So navigation bar tech color, I'm going to make this a really bright white to sort of make those colors pop just a little bit more. So I'll drag that slider all the way over. I can, okay, now I can easily see my different items here across the top. Okay, so that was easy. I'll jump back out of here. Let's start configuring the landing page. So jump right in here. I'll add a dashboard card. All of these different dashboard cards, again, coming straight out of the box. Of course, we don't have time to go through every single one today, but you can imagine the possibilities here. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a history sparkline card, and I'm going to select a history here. So with our history selector, I can search and filter. Anything I want to find here is going to be readily available to me. I'll just start typing here, and we're just going to go for discharge temp. We'll grab the temp and the set point here. So I'll hit OK. Again, it's going to plot that for me using my primary and secondary colors. I'll give it a title. This is my discharge temp versus set point. Really quick and easy to do that. I'm going to say this is going to look at the last eight hours. And I'm going to say, let's display our time range here so I can see that. Now, automatically, whenever I click this box, it's going to take me right into that history and give me all of the different reflow components that, that I want to use inside of my actual history chart there. I can always go back using the logo to back up with my homepage. Now, a really cool thing to set up um, using these, these uh, dashboard cards is the duplication and how easy it is to um, you know, make another one of these. So let's say I just duplicate that real quick. And maybe instead of having a full size card here, I want to only use a half size card to sort of fill out the space. So because of our responsive design, everything's going to try to fill out left to right first. So I really like this one. Let's duplicate it again. And easily you see how I'm just filling out the space while still keeping my padding in between the dashboard cards. Everything looks really crisp and easy. You know, doing this in Niagara might take a really long time, but Reflow really optimizes that process. 
So if I want to maybe use a, all of these cards one more time, I can hit edit here and I can say, let's select all of them. I've got some actions here. I can copy, duplicate, enable, disable, or delete. I want to duplicate them all. So I really I can use those again and hit done. Maybe for this last one, I want to go even smaller. Let's say we want a quarter size card and I'll duplicate that one more time. Oops. And now I've got some quarter size cards, some half size cards and some full size cards here. Now, just like I can go smaller, I can also go bigger. So let's duplicate this one more time. I'll grab that last one. Notice that came down here below. And maybe this one is double sized. And maybe this one is a uh, full size length here. So now I've got a lot of information. Now, this is a lot for just the history spark line. And maybe I want some ability to be able to change how this actually looks here. So instead of a history spark line, let's go ahead and switch this to history chart. And now I have all the same functionality that I have inside of my actual history chart inside of the dashboard. I don't even have to go to my full histories page there. So again, really easy to build out dashboard cards here. Okay, some other ones that are straight out of the box. Let's switch this from a weather forecast. Maybe you won't want to show a weather map instead. So let's make this a light style. I like the radar. Let's maybe give it radar with infrared satellite. Let's change the zoom level to five. Showing me all, showing all some of those clouds there. Let's take off those county lines and maybe the, uh, the roads there. We'll leave the interstates on so I can see sort of the main uh, areas that I want to look at there. Maybe let's change one more of the cards. So we'll go to this active alarms one and let's just build out a quick gauge. So for this, I'll just select a point here. We have a, a staking browser here where I can look for points. I'm just gonna look for a demand point here. Looks like I've got an electric meter demand right there. I can use that to search. I can even favorite that or use my histories to find that really quickly again. So with this one, maybe I wanna set my upper limit to let's say 500. Let's display those limits, add those in there. And then my gauge color, I'm actually going to make it dynamic. So notice we've got some choices here, primary, secondary, custom, and dynamic. When I switch over to dynamic, I'm going to choose that same point again by browsing my history. There's that demand point that I just used. And I'm going to say that our default color is just going to be maybe this light gray that we had before. If it's within our deviation, let's say this is green. If it's, if it's above, let's say it's red. If it's below, let's say it's blue. Now I can base this on a static number or I can base this on a Niagara point. Obviously, there is no demand set point here, so I'm just going to use a static number. And I'm going to drop it right in the middle and put it at 250. I was going to say our deviation is 50. So now you'll see this has changed to green. So anything from um, 300 to 200 is going to be green. Anything lower than that is going to be blue. And now it just switched to above that, and now it's red. I'll switch this title here. And I've got our electric demand. Now I can invent an icon here. Here's our 1800 icons so that I can look at solid, regular, and light. Of course, I can go search here and look for our bolt icon. I'll grab that. And I'm going to change the color of that to be custom. Maybe we just use a light, bright yellow here. I'll try to get one. And that looks pretty good. Let's hyperlink it out. So when I click on that card, I want to be able to go to a history. So I'll go to my history, to my history chart. I'll select my history. I'm going to find that demand there. There it is right there. I'll hit OK. I'm going to say this is going to be titled electric demand. I want to look at the last eight hours whenever I click that, and I'll hit OK there. So again, very quickly, I'm able to build out a really usable dashboard. I can drop right in there. It's going to show me that electric demand. Now, these slashes over here on the left are called implied values. So this doesn't necessarily mean that this data doesn't exist. It just means that the time period that I'm looking for um, is not tracking. So I started this station earlier this morning, which is why you see it starting here at 9, 9.15, but I use the station often. And if I looked at maybe, let's say last month, you'd see some of that other data in here. Okay, so jumping back to the landing page. Now, I really like this dashboard. Again, I want to sort of bring some of this to my building page because right now, if I go to my building page, it's blank. So let's say I hit edit here, and I'm just going to grab some of these, and we'll grab those four to start. Uh, actions, and I'm going to copy, hit done. We're going to go back out here. I'm going to go to my buildings page. 
there's John's building. I've got a dashboard here as well. And notice I've got this nice little icon allowing me to paste those cards right there. And very quickly, I don't have to do much configuration. I built it once, I built it for everyone. Okay. Now, again, everything working around the box here, I've got alarms, I've got schedules, I've got histories globally here. And then I've also got my sub navigation for all of the same things. So let's say for the page layout here, I want to go ahead and use my building photo as a hero, be able to pop that open. Now, this is a little bit light. It's making my title sort of fade away. Let's go ahead and add some tint here. So I'll just make this a little bit darker. I'll drag that slider over just so I can barely see my text, but still see the image behind. That looks pretty good. So again, you don't have to be a web developer to make Refo look really good. It's sort of built so that there's guidelines around what looks good and what doesn't. It's got padding, it's got good text choices, it's got good colors, um, and all everything looks and flows really well together there. Okay. So one of the biggest pieces that we deem um, specifically important for Refo is going to be the equipment, obviously, right? So I'll jump right into the equipment. By default, we have some types here set up. Now, these are um, not in stone, right? You can rename them, you can move them, change them, delete them, um, whatever you want to do, reconfigure them. I'm going to jump right into VABs to start since there's a, long, a shorter list of points here. So with VABs, um, everything is based around a points template. I can take a look at that points template here and look and see I've got my points broken into critical, important, secondary groups. Um, where I've got my different points with display names here on the left, and then on the right, I can put my NAGR point. Now, one thing that we support is called regular expressions right out of the box. Regular expressions are a little bit difficult to understand if you are not familiar with them, but you don't have to use them. For example, let's look at our space temperature. So if I have a site that is not following a very good point naming convention, um, I can use re regular expressions to sort of grab all different types of ways to spell that out. You can take a look at the auto detection details if you want to see, okay, well, maybe if my if my space temp name is like that, looks like it's going to find it. It's going to be a success. If it doesn't have that P, it's no longer going to find it. Maybe it's just TMP, and it is going to find that. So, again, regular expressions are very, very powerful um, to use if you're not following a good naming convention. Now, if I don't want to use regular expressions, I can quickly just delete that out and type it out just how it would be. It's going to be a Niagara name point, just a space temp, and it's going to be able to find that. It's got a little star because it is my featured point. And what I can do is um, use a point info marker to say, hey, this heating valve command is a heating point. Let's go ahead and mark that. I can save that as a template, and that's going to be set up for all my VABs now. A cool thing that you can do with that points template is actually export that out. So I can hit actions here, and I can export this as a CSV file and edit it elsewhere. Well, what does that allow me to do? That allows me to actually run a point query inside of Niagara to be able to build a, a template for all of my equipment without having to manually type it in. So of course, I've built one of these already. Let's go ahead and import it from the CSV file. So I'll look at templates here. I'll grab my VAV final export and I'll hit next. It's gonna say, hey, we got 26 points in this list. Is that good? It is. I've got my points grouped out already into zone, discharge, entering, heat and miscellaneous. What I want to do is configure this, these other groups here to show up as small cars, and I'll show you guys why in just a second. So again, very easy to do, very quick all, again, inside of the web browser, and I'll hit finish here. Now I can see this template. I can check one of those and look at my zone. Looks like it does have that star for the feature point. That's great. I want to go into heat here and maybe give some point identifiers here for my heating points, just so you guys can see that. And I'll go ahead and save that template. Now, it's pretty quick and easy to go ahead and add new VABs. So let's go to building A. I'll go to my equipment here and to my VABs. I want to add all of these all at the same time. So I'm just going to double click the parent folder here. It's going to grab all 15. I can hit next. I'm going to go with the reflow recommended view. I'll hit next again. Now, I can drop in just a static image here. But what I have set up already are some PX views. And I'll switch over here to Niagara to show those off here really quickly. So if I go to a VAV and double click on it, my default view is this graphic here. Now, what we've done so that this looks really good in Reflow is stripped out all of the things that we're not going to need. So all of the padding around it, there's very limited white space. Um, I've got this set, if I click on the canvas, to a minimum scale factor of zero, meaning that I can make this as small as I want. I've got it set to fit ratio, meaning it's never going to stretch this image 
um, and it's always going to look really good. And then I've got my background set to white. So that's how RPX is set up. And since this is the default view in Reflow, I can use the components default Niagara views for all of these VAVs. So for the graphic width, I'm going to configure this to be large. And I'm going to go ahead and hit next. So this is VAV1. It's going to give me my display name, but I am going to need to set my building and floor. So remember, we want to set up our building before we actually bring our equipment in. So this is going to be on John's building for the first floor. I could set my room name manually, or I could pull that in as a string point or um, or a slot, which I'll show you guys in a second. It's not served by anything yet because we don't have our AHUs in here, but I do want to go ahead and add a schedule. We're going to say that's on the floor one schedule. I can quickly check. Looks like it found these points. If one of these were wrong, I can click here and browse. This is going to automatically pull all the points underneath of what I chose as my board, or I can browse externally the station for the point. So I like this one. I can hit next here. Uh, notice it's going to keep a couple things. So my progress bar is going to move. My display name is going to change to VV2, but my building and floor and my schedule association aren't going to be the same. Now, the same thing is going to happen inside of my points. If I were to make a change on that first one, it's going to keep that change for the second one as well. It's just going to look for that um, in a relativized fashion. Now, I can continue to hit next through all of these, right? Or I can go ahead and hit finish because I know that all of these are going to be exactly the same. So it's going to say, hey, do you want to configure the rest of your devices? I do. I'll go ahead and hit continue. Awesome. Now, very quickly, I was able to build out this BAB list, right? I've got a nice grid here. I can even switch over to my table. It's going to show me a lot of good information. And I can dive right in and look at what one of these BABs is going to look like. Again, just a different look at what a graphic can look like. So I've got my graphic over here on the left. I've got my large point cards over here on the right. And then my small point cards are following down beneath. Now, this may not be a layout that fits everyone, right? It gives me a lot of information, but um, trying to find the point that I actually want inside of the group may be a little bit difficult. Well, what can I do about that? What I can do is go back to my graphic settings. I can look at additional options, sorry, device graphic pages. And let's say I switch my default point card style from classic to compact, and then I enable notes. So now when I go to my BAV, I've got this nice looking graphic here, different look at what the cards can look like, same functionality though. So I can still see that this point is overridden. I still see my heating badges. I can still click on this point and look at the smart history and make changes to the actual point itself. I've also got notes here. So I can say, let's add a note. This is gonna be my first note. Let's go ahead and add a couple more. So second note and third note. Now notice everything's filing to the left. It gives me the user that made that note and then the timestamp and date that it was created. Now let's say our second note is a little more important. I can go ahead and pin that over to the left. But maybe our first note is the most important. So I can actually highlight that as an important note. And even up at the top, it's going to give me that little notification there, letting me know that, hey, if you're looking at this piece of graphic, you might want to might take a look at the notes that we got down there for you. Okay. So I know that was quite a bit of information. I want to open up a little bit for q and A. I see a lot of things that uh, that Randy's been answering in the chat. Um, I want to give give some time to, to answer some questions. So I'm just going to sort of try to read through some of these really quickly. Um, Randy made a good comment. So he said that um, this is going to take a lot less labor. Um, than it would for a standard Niagara PX. That is absolutely true. So a lot of people ask me, well, how much? Um, it depends on how, how good you get at Reflow. So we do offer a certification training class that sort of helps you optimize your workflow there, but you really don't necessarily need it if you're just trying to um, dive right in and you know be the best at uh, building the site from scratch, right? So definitely we'll optimize some of the workflows and you'll learn a lot of tips and tricks there um, if you plan on standardizing with Reflow as uh, product moving forward. Um, generally, what we say is it's going to save you um, about 30 to 30 percent of your time. So really efficient when it comes to building out those graphics. Of course, right now you're still building out the uh, Niagara PX, but all of your histories, alarm schedules are already built in with the graphic. You have a dashboard set up for you. You have your building level stuff, and then you can use equipment templates to really optimize the speed when it comes to bringing those things in. Um, great question about the license. So um, the license is simply a Reflow site license. So once you license it one time on a production server, you're good to go or a JACE. 
Um, it works on any Niagara installation. If you're using it on a workbench level um, for your machine uh, and in-house to sort of build that out, we have what's called an integrator demo license, and you're able to license that for a much lower cost per year just to keep that active. It has unlimited devices to where you can build out any scaled size site and be able to deploy that without having to actually buy a full extra license for yourself. Now, reflow site licenses, the ones that actually live on JSONs or servers, do not have an annual cost. It's a one-time fee, and you'll have that forever for the life of reflow. Okay. Um, I think I'll open it up here a little bit. Does anyone want to um, speak up and have any questions? I know there's quite a bit of you in here. Um, feel free to either um, speak up or drop it in the chat. I will be happy to answer those. John, uh, one one thing uh, we may, maybe you ought to clarify is uh, on the site license. Once we have that deployed, there's no annual cost, and doesn't don't don't you get the uh, upgrades, the new upgrades as they come out? Isn't that part of the license? Yeah, absolutely. So that you you walked right into uh, what I want to sort of discuss next. So yeah, absolutely. Once you drop in a reflow site license, there is no update fee. Anytime that we make a change to reflow, all you have to do is update your modules free of cost, and you'll have that forever. Um, now, speaking of that, we are moving into a different space where we're going to be um, dropping into a, a new version of reflow. So it's going to be called reflow two. And I'll, show, I'll sort of show you guys what that looks like here in a second. So Evan had a good question. How did the graphs charts look, interact on mobile? Just the same as you would expect. I'm glad you asked. So while you're in this config view, you can actually preview what that's going to look like inside of mobile. So let's say I hit this little uh, icon here up at the top. I can switch from desktop to tablet to mobile view. And I can quickly see what that's going to look like. Let's say I want to look at my discharge to the set point. I've got my graphic here. I've got all the same tools that I would have um, inside of my actual regular view here. Let's look at the last hour. I can see that chart. And again, I can click and add chart data just as I would on, on uh, my desktop view. Same thing's going to happen if I turn my phone sideways. So it's going to look really good. Great question. OK. So I want to show you guys this. Um, along with all of the awesome stuff that we've got right now, we have a multitude of things coming down the pipe. So with Reflow 2, we've got a lot of things that are going to enhance that efficiency when you're building out um, sites. Um, again, a lot of this is stuff that a lot of people have been asking for for quite some time. And of course, I don't have time to go through every single one specifically, but I can jump through this presentation here um, pretty quickly and show off some of the highlights. So the first one of those being storage and sync. So with Reflow 2, you're going to be able to have multiple users in the configuration at the same time. This is something that is available with Reflow 1 right now, but it's in a very experimental state. Um, so we ask that you, know, you take good backups the whole time you're doing that. Um, inside of Reflow to make sure that nothing gets crisscrossed because ultimately you are writing to the same file um, and that's just one JSON file. So inside of here, you're going to be able to make projects, have project descriptions, and be able to have sort of a draft and publish workflow, meaning that every change you make doesn't have to necessarily be live automatically. It's only going to push that when you publish it. And then you're going to have multiple project support. So you'll see that first project there and then going to multiple different projects in the draft and being able to publish those as you go, having more of a relational database storage system. As far as file manager and uploads, so we are implementing a full um, fledged file manager inside of Reflow, meaning there won't have to be as much back and forth into Workbench to be able to edit your files, drop in your files, change the licenses. You're going to be able to see all of that through the web browser inside of Reflow, and it's going to make that, that whole um, configuration space a lot easier and more streamlined for you. So here's a little uh, video of Adam sort of bringing those building images over into his file system from the right side, dropping them over to the left to shine off how easy it is. Sort of more like a Dropbox feel if you're familiar with that. Um, so really cool stuff there. 
Another thing that we're going to be implementing with Reflow 2 is our themes. So right now, you can pretty much look at any Reflow site and sort of tell that it's it's using Reflow, right? Um, with the logo in the top left, the dashboard in the middle, the sort of navigation across the top. Um, with Reflow 2, we're going to come up with a plugin called Themes that's going to be able to sort of modify that a little bit. And it's going to offer dark and light mode for everything that we offer out of the box. The classic theme, of course, is going to be available, but we'll have more available at launch with dozens to follow. So jumping over just to show you guys some of the designs very quickly, this is the Barkley design concept. Things that are different about this one is it's got a side navigation with sort of rounded corners, um, lighter dashboards um, with light and dark support. So showing off what that may look like in the dark mode, that looks really awesome. Um, Zach, our graphic designer, has been working very hard on these to push these out for you guys um, because we've had a lot of requests towards it and these all look really awesome. We're really excited about this. The next one is a Jordan design concept, so offering more of a map-based navigation. You'll notice it feels more like, like an Airbnb or maybe Realtor.com or Zillow showing off sort of the map function on the left and having the properties over on the right with a little bit of a mega menu up at the top uh, with all the information that you need right there. Third one is a Stockton design concept, so it's more photography-based. If you got some nice imagery that you want to pull through for your customer, you'll be able to do that, giving them a really large view and look into that. A lot of modern uh, websites are using and implementing this in their day-to-day -day development, so we thought that we should too. And then the Drexler design concept, more of like a portfolio view where you can sort of go through these in a rotunda style using the previous and next buttons over on the top. And then having sort of like a, a drop down list um, there that's going to be a mega menu again with a full portfolio there at the bottom. So the plugins specifically are going to be first name third party. We're going to um, extend functionality without loading the core features of the reflow uh, cost there. And each plugin is going to be a separate inform module. So really excited about that. Things that we're looking at are kiosks, dashboard card packs, energy packs enterprise security, and then analytics, of course. Now, our biggest um, sort of update for Reflow 2, and again, I'll get through this really quickly, is going to be our partnership with BSGFX. This is going to offer a graphics package straight out of the box that's going to work with our templates for equipment. You can kind of see some of these looks here. So if you're really looking to get away from the standard bag or for um, graphics package, um, this is going to be a really exciting update for you guys, and they look really awesome. Again, this is a great guy that is really talented and and all of his graphics look really good. So we've partnered with them to implement that inside of Reflow 2, again, as a graphics library plugin. So really exciting stuff coming down the pipe. Um, I want to get through a couple other questions here in the chat really quick. So training is available to use and deploy this product. We offer it ourselves. It is virtual. It's a three-day. So the first two days are sort of walking through me with the labs. And then the last day is going through the exam. Um, as far as which versions are compatible, um, for Reflow, we support any version MAG or 4.6 and up, so we are on the early release team that um, get all the beta versions of the new Niagara versions, and we test that thoroughly before um, saying that it works, so we have availability through 4.6 and later. Okay. Uh, a lot of great questions, guys. I really appreciate it. Um, hopefully you learned a little bit and hopefully you're excited about everything that we've got now and everything that we've got coming down the pipe. 